In last week's video, we dove deep into what I think is the best statistic that you can use to evaluate hitters. But what about pitchers? Many of today's commonly used statistics used here have some major flaws. And there are a couple that come to mind, but I'm not going to pick on the low hanging fruit here. So in today's video, we tackle those flaws as well as explaining what to me is the best pitching statistic, FIP. Before we jump into it, welcome back to another video guys. If you're new here and you're a coach, player, or trainer interested in learning more about the practical applications of data-driven baseball, you've come to the right place. Join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below for more weekly baseball animations. In order to understand the value of FIP, we first need to understand the issues with what current popular statistics are being used to analyze pitchers. Starting with every forward-thinking baseball mind's least favorite stat, wins and losses. I refuse to dive into all the issues that there is with this stat, but I do need to talk about it because of its popularity and the weight that it's held in the game for so long. It's a stat that is given to a pitcher based on several items that are out of their control. In particular, how their team hit that day can have an effect on how that athlete is said to have done over an entire season. And that brings out one of the major issues with many of the popular pitching statistics. And to our golden rule, when analyzing players at any time, whether that's player development or otherwise, you must focus on things that a player can control. If a stat relies on the rest of the team's performance, then it's not going to be an accurate representation of that athlete. Next, let's tackle another popular yet troublesome statistic, ERA, or Earned Run Average. ERA is calculated by taking your earned runs over your innings pitch and multiplying that number by nine. It is intended to take a snapshot of how many runs a pitcher would allow on average every nine innings. But how accurate is it? The issue here is that again, you are including the defense's ability to stop runs in this pitching statistic. If a ball is put in play, the talent of your defense comes into the picture and your ability to limit the damage. ERA does a terrific job of telling us how many runs were scored while a pitcher was on the mound, but that number depends on that pitcher's defense. Some amount of luck, and even the order of events occurred. For example, if a pitcher gives up two singles then a home run, that equals three runs. But if they allow one home run and then two singles, that's only one run for the same exact results. You get the idea. The problem with these first two statistics is that it relies on the defense and some things out of a pitcher's control. That brings us to WHIP. WHIP stands for walks plus hits per innings pitch, which is exactly how you calculate this statistic. It is a measure of how often a pitcher allows a batter to reach the base. And honestly, it's a pretty easy statistic that I use occasionally, but it still relies on hits, which is the same issue that we had with ERA. A hit doesn't always mean that the pitcher performed poorly. It can also mean that the defense performed poorly, not getting to a ball they maybe should have. You get the idea. But this statistic takes a step in the right direction when looking at things that a pitcher can control. And before we move on, I want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions to two stats that I find very useful in evaluating a pitcher's stuff and their control over a long period of time. That's strikeouts per nine and walks per nine. All three of these stats, including whip, are pretty decent at evaluating a pitcher's performance. But in today's video, we're here to talk about the one all-encompassing statistic that I find king above all others. And to me, that's FIP. FIP stands for Fielding Independent Pitching. It is a statistic that ultimately isolates the performance of the pitcher separate from the ability of the defense behind them. Here's our equation for FIP. First, we'll break this complicated thing down by focusing on all the information between the parentheses. You can see that the five factors taken into account when calculating FIP are home runs, walks, hit by pitches, strikeouts, and innings pitch. FIP uses these figures because they are numbers that we know don't involve any luck when the ball is inevitably put in play. It follows our golden rule, only utilizing items that are in the pitcher's control. Each of these stats pass that test. Oh, and if you're questioning home runs, because technically that does involve the hitter's ability a little bit, there's a version of FIP called Expected FIP or XFIP that alters the stat to replace home runs with the number of fly balls a pitcher allows multiplied by the league's average home run to fly ball ratio. This eliminates things like park factors, weather conditions, and anything else you can think of to help follow our golden rule. Now what about the FIP constant? This is used to put FIP onto the exact same scale that ERA is that year in the league. So it should be pretty easy to follow. This is another complicated looking formula. 
but it really is quite simple if you understand the first one. You take the average league ERA and subtract that same equation we used up top to find FIP, but instead we put in league totals rather than an athlete's totals, and that gives us our constant. This is super beneficial if you're looking to apply FIP at whatever level you are currently working at, because if you have access to your league's data, you can find your own constant to keep an even playing field. To give you an idea, the average FIP constant is around 3.1, and in the 2019 season, it was at 3.214, if you're not looking to do some math on your own. Now let's take a second to revisit why this statistic is so valuable. Most pitching stats, as we said, don't follow the golden rule. They are largely influenced by the quality of the defensive play around whichever pitcher you are evaluating. If you took Jacob deGrom and put him on one of the best defensive teams in the country, I guarantee you that his wins would go up, his ERA, and his whip will go down. That is why I'm creating videos like this, because that's an issue. The numbers most of the population evaluate pitchers on is swayed due to the rest of the team's performance on each given day. So the next time you go to analyze a player's past performance, remember our golden rule and make sure what you're referencing only takes into account things within that athlete's control. Finally, I'll leave you with a general outline of how FIP ranks guys. Like I said before, this is variable because of our constant. You can follow whatever your average ERA is that year to give you a general idea, but here's how 2019 shook out. Guys who fell into the excellent FIP range in 2019 includes guys like Scherzer, Garrett Cole, and DeGrom, of course. People in the great category include guys like Syndergaard and Patrick Corbin, and guys like Marcus Stroman and Kyle Hendricks fell into the above average range. You get the point. But now that you understand what FIP is and how it's calculated, how are you supposed to apply it? FIP is a phenomenal stat because you are able to use it at whatever level you are at right now by simply manipulating your own constant. It can be used the same way you would utilize ERA, or how we talked about WOBA to rank certain athletes based on their performance, in their performance alone. Like I said, my goal in doing these videos on certain sabermetric statistics is to help change the way that each of you are looking at the game of baseball, giving you a new lens through our golden rule to properly analyze what you have in front of you. Pitching statistics are an individual stat, and the mainstream ones often don't treat it like one by relying on the team's play around each pitcher, so help me spread the word by sharing this video with a friend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.